Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to yet another Stay Fishy Adventure. Today starts off much like our last episode ended and that is living off the land, eating weird stuff. And so with that in mind, we're out foraging, we're out enjoying Mother Nature, and we're out to find the biggest adventure of the day that we possibly can. So stick around, today's adventure is gonna be a great one. Thank you for being here. Let's go have some fun. What we're in search of to start off this morning is we're looking for a special kind of wild edible and it's like a it's like a lettuce that's going to go along well with our sandwich that we're going to make today as you guys saw on the thumbnail today's recipe is a little weird a little little abstract if you will uh, but it's very tasty and it's something that i'm excited to try with you guys but first things first we have to find the greenery for our sandwich so that's what we're doing we're walking up the bottom of a spring in this beautiful majestic canyon you can see through here the rocks the wildlife the dead trees everything makes this place just super unique and beautiful so once we find what we're looking for i'll explain to you guys what it is exactly and give you kind of a history lesson on this little herb so let's keep looking we got to find water we got to find fresh clean water one i'm going to wash my face in it and two hopefully it'll have the beginnings to our recipe here today so let's go so here's not our desired species of, of herb but it's an herb no less and an absolutely delicious one beautiful one this is actually spearmint and i wish wish you guys could smell this this is the most vibrant and, and beautiful smelling herb that there is uh this is mint and this is wild to this area there was actually a tick on the camera i don't know if you guys saw that but uh this herb is very very nice to make drinks with it's great to use as a spice and like a dessert or anything like that so i'm going to take a couple with now something to talk about while i'm cutting right next to it is this stuff right here now this, everything around us is fine. Might cause a little itch, might cause a little irritation just from rubbing up against it, but that one will ruin your day. That is poison ivy, everybody. You can see we got the three leaves of death followed by the little berries inside that little patch. Now a lot of things look like poison ivy, so the best thing is, if you don't know what it is, don't touch it. Uh, but I had this mint sitting right next to it. So it's a good reason to talk about it. And as you guys go into the summer and start camping and going out to the lakes and stuff, be aware of the three leaves of death, poison ivy and poison oak. We'll find poison oak in another episode and show you what that looks like so that you guys can enjoy yourselves and not be miserable with a big rash all over your body of itchy mess. But now we have to find our lettuce. And that is what we're looking for. So let's make a couple of little rounds around this pond, try to find a nice wet spot for this stuff to grow and see if we can locate our watercress. And here it is, found some. Like I said before, this, oh, great digger. That was a fat guy. That was a big old stud field mouse there. So here it is, this is what I was looking for all along everybody, this is what we call watercress and it's these smaller leaves here this stuff is a very 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 tasty herb that grows in swampy areas like this in the northwest uh, and all over the world it originated in in eastern europe and this is actually a vegetable that's been consumed longer than any by humans on the face of the earth i did some research on this stuff recently and it's a very bitter yet has like a very nice sweet flavor to it and it adds a great flavor to a salad especially a naturally picked like spring mix like we're going to make today so i'm going to pick some of this stuff i brought my knife and it really has just a, a great aroma, a great flavor. It has kind of a spinach taste almost, but a little bit of a spice at the end. So I'm gonna harvest some of this stuff, put it in the cooler, and on our way we go. There we have it. A beautiful bouquet of watercress. Let's hit the road. You ready? Well, in the spirit of frogging, I had to try it again. If you guys didn't see the last video where we went bullfrog fishing, uh, I found a new method and I've been told about this forever, but you're gonna have to go back and watch the old video on how it went, because it was absolutely amazing and it was a really cool new discovery on how to catch these things. So we're back at it and we're doing it again so that we can make a little bit different recipe this time. So I got my fly rod, I got my caddis. I'm gonna grab a couple different flies this time. I got one hiding under here. Heck of a tackle box. We have ourselves a big golden stone fly or a purple stone fly, one of the two. I can hear them calling to me already. And then we have a purple haze, so we'll see which one they're biting on today. Let's go. Okay. 
Okay, we have some targets. We have a few targets inbound, everyone. I see a few. It's gotta land the perfect cast. I see one right there. It's not interested. This is gonna take precision casting. <gasps> that was it. Didn't budge. Oh, that was a perfect presentation and he didn't take. Something is wrong with these frogs. Wow, everybody. I don't know if you can see this, but as I was sneaking along the bank, look at these swarms of tadpoles. I'm not sure if it, the camera will pick it up that well, but you can just see these absolute, just, I mean, like clouds of them going through here. They're all like going in a circular motion. And you can tell why there's so many frogs in this place. What I'm noticing so far is contrary to the last time that I did this was the frogs, oh, big bass looking right at me. Contrary to the last time that I did this, the frogs are actually sitting along the bank and sunning themselves, not so much out in the middle of the lake. Let's see if I can catch this bass. You can see this bass has a little bed sitting here, you guys. He's actually protecting it right now. It's got a little hole dug and that's where that bass is actually laying its eggs. Oh. Maybe. But anyways, it's been a lot harder to target these bullfrogs because they're not actually out in the pond like we saw in our last video when we were doing this. So I'm gonna keep creeping along the, the pond bank. This might turn into a completely different style of fishing. I might have to put the fly rod down and see if I can catch them either by hand or with a net or, or something. Something has gotta give here because I'm having a hard time sneaking up on these things for the brush that they're sitting in. So let's keep trying. Okay, pond number three. Today seems to be a little bit weirder day for getting these bullfrogs. The last couple of ponds that we fished, I feel like they had a lot of bass in them and you could see almost as we walked the banks of these ponds, these bass were following us and hunting us just like they were hunting the bullfrogs. So every time we'd scare those frogs in off the bank, those bass would chase after them and try to eat them. So we switched ponds, we come to another area where I think there's probably not as many bass. Let's walk out there. Let's see if we can find ourselves some frog. <music> There he is, there he is, there he is. We got one on lock. Okay, he went in a hole, everybody. I'm gonna see if I can get him. This thing scurried up into this hole, into this little grass bank. Stay a little. I'm gonna hop off on this grass hummock, see if I can grab him by hand. Got him, I got him, I got him. <laughs> I got him! <laughs> Who needs a fly rod? When you got your bare hands, first frog of the day. Hallelujah. It has been a struggle. This is not the same conditions that we fished yesterday. If you guys didn't see that frog episode that we made yesterday, it was a lot easier to get these things on the fly rod, which made it a lot of fun. But nonetheless, we, uh, we prevailed. And there he is, frog number one. Sweet. Okay, we're gonna put this guy out of his misery. We're gonna hide him. We're gonna try to get one more. New sport, frog noodling. It's a great way to get ticks. I didn't see where this one went, but there's a big frog here. I heard him. Ah, swing and a miss. Oh, that's a giant. That was a giant. I don't know what to do. He's right there in front of me. Kind of want to just take my shoes off and try to grab him. See if I can find a stick. Dang it. That one got away. Well, it was hard fought, but a win no less. We got ourselves a bullfrog. 
have one more spot in mind where I hope we can get a couple of more. Uh, we're gonna need at least two for this recipe because I wanna make a whole sandwich out of this and I have a really cool recipe in mind for the sandwich, but we're gonna need a little bit more meat than just two frog legs. So I'm gonna hike out of here, clean all the ticks off of me and get to one more pond that could be a little bit easier to find these things. This one was really brushy, kind of hard to navigate. I should have had some sandals or something on where I could actually get in the water with these things. But nonetheless, we've got a frog. He's ours and we're gonna eat him. Heck yeah. See one right up along the bank over there. The heat has definitely affected the frogs today. I can tell that they're they're tucking in along the banks. They're staying in the shade. They're staying out of that direct sunlight. So that's going to kind of dictate how we fish for them here. I'm going to sneak up to the edge, see if we can't get a cast in front of one. Oh, <gasps> he's staring right at us, guys. I don't know if you can see him. He's looking right at us. He's staring into my soul. He's staring into my soul. We gotta catch him and we gotta eat him. We gotta steal our soul back. Got him, oh, my first cast, oh my God. He smashed it, he smashed it, I got him, I got him. <laughs> That's what we call the flip flop ribbit. The flip flop ribbit. <laughs> Oh, that was good stuff. That was better than any topwater take in the world right there. Look at how he chowed that fly. Holy smokes, that was live action right there, everybody. High five. Oh, oh, oh. The old flip flop ribbit. That was epic, everyone. That's a trophy frog right there. He's waving at the camera. Sorry, buddy. We're gonna eat you. Okay, everyone, there's one last but not least ingredient to this recipe, and it is our miner's lettuce. This stuff is a very delicious herb that grows a lot of times in reburnt and like regrowth areas, and this is it right here. You see these little clover type leaves? This is what's gonna go to the top of our frog sandwich. I'm gonna harvest some, get back on the road, and it's time to make a delicious meal. Okay, so I'm gonna do this a little bit differently than the last recipe that I did. I'm actually gonna take all the meat here off the bone so I can chop it into smaller pieces. Uh, and as you guys can already see, how really, honestly, how nice this meat is. I hate to talk up the frogs too much because uh, I'm sure a lot of you out there are still cringing at the idea of us even eating these things. But to be quite honest, it's a really, really nice meat and it has a great flavor. And I think it's gonna go really well with this kind of cream cheese based uh, sandwich dish that I'm gonna do. I've done this similar recipe on past episodes with leftover fish. Uh, but today I'm using a fresh amphibian style of fish here today um, and I think it's going to turn out great. Okay, I'm just going to thinly slice this stuff into these small little pieces, kind of chunk it up. That way it mixes in with my cream cheese and my other veggies. And so what I'm going to do is almost use my, my watercress like a, like, a, uh, like a spinach in a way. I'm going to actually cook it in with this stuff and then add my cheese to it. And then I'm going to use my miner's lettuce as my topping on top of that, uh, mixed with a little bit of balsamic and a little bit more oil to kind of give it a little, a little extra kick, that little extra flavor. So I'm going to do like a Cajun style seasoning on this, a little bit of that watercress in there to give it that nice spice and that, that wholesomeness that that like spinach style of green is going to get. And then of course, add it into my amphibious creation here. I think we're going to I think we're gonna like what comes out of this. Okay, I'm gonna give myself a pretty healthy helping in my watercrust here. Chop it up into some nice little pieces. And that's gonna go right into the pan with the frog. And create, like I said, that really nice kind of spinach addition. Take some of those little sprouts out of there. I've been told 
it's been known to give you bad dreams if you eat too many of those little flowers. So we all know how that goes. So into the pan we go. I'm gonna add a little butter, and then in goes my frog and my watercress. Kind of see how these things are already cooking up really nice. Kind of just like this little, those little giblets. They look like perfect little tender pieces of meat that's gonna go well. Uh, mix in with that spicy uh, uh, watercress that we have. I'm gonna take my one piece of bread here. I'm only gonna go half sandwich here. I'm gonna add a little bit of cheese to one side of that and throw it right in the toaster oven. Okay, now I'm gonna add about a half cup of cream cheese to my mixture here. Mm -mm -mm. I don't care what you guys say out there. It looks like it's hopping into a very nice dish. Do a quick little flip on that. Bam, look at that. Ribbit. I'm turn the heat off on that, kind of let that cheese come back together. Let that whole little mixture kind of stick back together like that. Wait for my toast to get done, and then we're ready for a frog sandwich. And then for on top, I have my miner's lettuce. I'm gonna kind of break some of these Leaves off the top here, get some of these stems out of there. And this is what I'm gonna add, is like my, my lettuce to the top of this. Gonna give it a nice fresh crisp, add a little sweetness to it. But I'm also gonna add a tiny bit of the garlic parmesan dipping oil. Give that a little toss, just like that. There we have it. It's got a great aroma. That oil adds a nice, nice sweet, like kinda, kind of oily taste to it, of course. And it's gonna go perfectly with this dish. Okay, here we go. Kind of finish this off. It's a new thing that I found lately. It's the bitchin' uh, chipotle sauce. I'm not gonna tell you where I found it because then I won't be able to find it anymore because that's how that grocery store goes. But this is about the only thing we didn't forage ourselves, but it's a very nice organic chipotle sauce. Mmm, perfect. On goes our frog. It almost resembles crawdad tails to me, honestly. And I'm kind of, I kind of would compliment it with the same sort of flavor as crawdad. Uh, very, very light, crunchy meat. And I think no matter what, it's gonna be good because it's frog and we caught it by ourselves. So here we go. Let's top it off with our garnish. Let's see the comments below everybody. Did you ever think a frog sandwich could look so darned good? Mm, let's give it a try. Oh my God, the flavor of those greens with that tenderness of the frog leg, as well as that little oil on top with that nice sweetness of that, uh, that miner's lettuce. I couldn't ask for anything better. I'm gonna cut this thing open one more time so you guys can really get to see the innards here of this creation. Just look at that. Oh, what a good dish. I wanna see your comments below, you guys. What did you think of these frog challenges? There's gonna be some weird stuff being eaten again here soon. On Stay Fishy, I have some more ideas on some different edibles and some different things we can go out and catch ourselves and enjoy in the kitchen here together. So I wanna see your comments below and see what you thought of today's episode and today's dish. I really appreciate you all being here and supporting this channel, Stay Fishy Adventures. I'm having so much fun making these videos and I'm really glad that you guys are along every week for the ride. So until next week, you all stay fishy and we'll see you out there.